Hi, this is Janos. It's Real World Audio. And today you are getting something truly, truly special. Because this is the day for the great Alnico versus Ferrite debate. So I'm going to look at the issue of using loudspeaker drivers with either with ferrite magnets or alnico magnets. This is going to be the big, big overview. I'm not going to make call it a, a shootout or a, or a competition because I, I did something similar with a compression driver and, and beryllium tweeter before and, and, and some of you were really sensitive of using a imagery that involved violence. Um, I, I think like a, like a, a friendly sparring match, it's not violent, it's, it's healthy, it's competitive, it's good for us, but if you uh, want to have a, a more benign imagery, that, then uh, just imagine a pair of purring kittens or, a, a, I don't know, a tank full of fishes, and, 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 and that's, that's better uh, and kinder for, for your soul than just by all means. So anyway, Today I'm going to look at uh, alnicos and ferrites because there's uh, so much about them, so much has been said and, uh, and uh, let's see if I can find very fast those comments. Uh, of course I cannot find, I have my notebook in front of me and of course I don't have any, oh maybe here let's hope I think I'm getting to that video yes so so it was uh, Ramsey's uh, post that, that he asked about uh, the ferrite magnet grade Y25 and um, we had loads of comments on it and uh, and I made this video because uh, Eddie posted uh, something very interesting and, and I'm going to read out part of his post and uh, I can add something I've discovered about the argument regarding ferrite and alnico. Back in the 60s when driver manufacturers chose ferrite due to the embargo on minerals from Congo, they did extensive testing to ensure there was little if any difference on quality of sound and even found advantages like non-demagnetization. These were specialist manufacturers like Lansing, Kef, Goodmans, etc., who took great pride in what they produced. Most of Alnico being better than ferrite is just regurgitated negativity uh, by people I bet never heard them personally, but need to say something on a hi fi forum. And Eddie is totally, totally okay with this comment because <laughs> that's what we get, that's the image we get when we. Uh, look online and try to find out what, what's the difference between that is that um, I was looking at, at posts <laughs> and then I I, uh, I looked up two different threads and uh, lots of commentaries of various people with various levels of background and expertise commenting and um, <clears throat> when you want to know about the subject it's like a uh, a lot of the comments you find, like 50 plus percent of them, is by people who never even heard Alnico uh, driver uh, speakers. So, mm, so they are not getting any, any useful information at all. And then you also get comments from musicians. And, and, uh, and then musicians had, have their own pet peeves and, and you don't know that... Uh, he he prefers one to the other, but that's just like hugely personal. How does that affect me as a user? What's what's the impact of a musician's feedback on my experience? Is it going to make any difference? And then there are comments by audiophiles who, who clearly have a, a vast experience with audio gear and they say that <clears throat> I, I tried it out and I tried equivalent models like exact same driver just the magnet is different otherwise everything is same I couldn't tell a difference it, it was exactly the same and, and and there's like other folks who are saying that there's a world of difference between them so what is the truth 
and be, and also like some people who say okay i have some uh, electronics background or not just some or maybe like decades of experience or i worked in the industry and 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 the measurements are the same between them or there is no significant differences or even if there are differences they do not indicate superiority of one or the other so we will look also at the measurement so i think by the time i'm finished with all of these plus giving you my commentary on 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 these uh, feedbacks of people then probably we'll be up at several videos because i will also show you an example of comparing a ferrite driver to an alnico driver so these will be two drivers one of them uh, I, I just heard the alnico the diatom that i will be using a friend, close friend of mine has uh, speakers uh, using that and the others are my fostex fe204 that i used for two decades in my void pipe and those are ferrite magnets so uh and and also i have a variety of ferrite drivers and alnico drivers that i have used during my two plus decades of audiophile experience so i will share what what i can share about uh, what is my experience with them where one has advantage where the other has advantage and uh uh, and I want to make this not as which is better because clearly by the end we will get to the point that you will notice that each one has its applications and where you want one versus where you want the other. And, and I want to make this mini-series to give you uh, an information basis to be able to choose for yourself the right type that, uh, that will bring you fulfillment. So, okay, without further ado, let's just get into it. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is uh, a discussion thread from audiokarma.org. And this is from 2012, that, that's when the thread originated. And, uh, and I will read, so actually I will give you, so, so here it is. This is my website. This is my blog, <laughs> uh, Real World Audio blog. And now you see this is not the posted version, but is the raw version that I am editing and preparing. I will give you the link to it so that you can browse and read through everything for yourself. And, uh, and it also has the link to the original Audio Karma thread so that you can see and see the original and there's more posts i didn't copy all of it because then we would be sitting here next year talking about stuff so original post i know this will ruffle some feathers but i think i have pretty good hearing a good grasp of physics and quite a bit of first-hand experience with speakers but i'm at a loss to explain why so many people are enamored with alnico magnets i can't hear any difference between a driver with one type of magnet over any other. Assuming the magnetic field is similar, it's not like Alnico magnets couldn't be employed in modern speakers, yet almost no one does. That alone seems an interesting indictment after all, if you were, say, Wilson Audio or such, why wouldn't you be using these magic magnets in your drivers I'm not a metallurgist or expert in magnetic fields, but from what little I can gather, they are no stronger nor long of life than several options available today. So my question buried in this rant, if anyone can explain why some people seem so determined to press this Alnico superiority, posted by Frommer Stop in 2012, October. So, here we go. So, uh, so what he's saying is they can't tell any difference between them. Probably there's no difference between the, uh, the magnetic fields either. Actually, there's loads of differences. Uh, and, and he points out the command that uh, if mag mag uh, Alnico was so much better or superior, Wilson Audio for sure would use Alnico, right? And... Uh, 
And the response to that is that actually, uh, two, uh, 2012, there were not many companies using Alnico and, and Wilson Audio, they are making their drivers in Indonesia. And although they sell their products for a lot of money, but the drivers are made on a very low budget and, and making, asking it to be made with Alnico would drive the Wilson speakers prices quite a bit higher. So <clears throat> even at that price range, with, with, which we think ridiculous, they are still quite conscientious about the magnets they use and, and or every single part they use. Plus, the Wilson audio sound is, is, uh, is really fine-tuned uh, for non-Alnico magnets. And the equipment that Wilson gear are, are voiced to go with, it's not the Alnico world. So, uh, so basically, what's happening is that, in my experience, Alnicos allow us to hear really low dynamic level information that ferrite magnets or neodymium they cannot extract and they are uh, this benefit comes up with very high efficiency loudspeakers so if you put alnico magnet into a current hungry low efficiency loudspeaker and, and Wilson's are the poster child of that technology. It's not going to give you any benefit whatsoever because that low efficiency is not going to bring to you the, the benefits of Alnico. They are going to be buried under the low efficiency. So it's not going to um, bloom. And also because the these low efficiency drivers that Wilson uses, they, uh, the, the prime uh, function on them is that to, so they, they, they eat up tons of current, so they run really, really hot. So you really need the, 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 the motor structure that ferrite magnets and neodymium magnets use to keep them cool because the big difference between Alnico and, and ferrite is not just the material of the uh, magnet, but the motor structure is completely different. One, uh, so the Alnico was the older one, and there the magnet is in the center, then there's the voice coil around the center, and then there is a metal ring around them closing the magnetic... Uh, circuit and and it's a perfect magnetic circuit for the ferrite drivers they flipped it inside out so in the center there's an iron pole piece and 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 the voice call goes around the iron pole piece that is magnetizable and around it there is a ferrite ring so the magnet surrounds the voice call it's around that but the closest element that sits next to the voice coil that is primarily affecting uh, the voice coil is iron, soft iron that can be magnetized. And it's magnetized because the circuit driven by the ferrite ring around it, it's, it's magnetized by that ferrite ring. However, uh, because the center is, is magnetizable, as, as, as we pass information through the voice coil, it's going to affect that field, that, that, that pole piece. It, the, the, the magnetic field will fluctuate slightly. And, and the, re the result of that is that it's going to eat up the very low level details. It will mush together. So when there's especially, when there's like a bigger dynamic peak, like, like a bigger signal, and there's a smaller signal riding on top of the bigger signal, that smaller signal will be smeared because that pole piece will be magnetized by the, uh, by the, by the flipping magnetic field that's generated by the voice coil, which is in the proximity. So the, the voice coil <laughs> is closer to the pole piece than the ferrite magnet that's supposed to provide that stable magnetic field. So here's physics for you. 
uh, that here's a difference between them. And now, as viewers on audio have very low efficiency speakers, which which compress the dynamic range, and uh, and and that's why these these tiny dynamic nuances are not coming up. And and if you use a ferrite driver, you won't notice the difference as much, uh, especially with those systems that they are being used, which are very high current, very high damping factor, and high feedback amplifiers. So they they erase those low level information, low level dynamic information is erased. So it's not coming from the amplifier anyway. And uh, and any and even if we would hook up an amplifier that's capable of that wide dynamic range of resolution, then the driver would mush it up anyway. And and when we would need so much so high current that to have a purist system that is able to deliver that much current, that doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't work. It's, it's, it's stop. The function is... Um, so, so a purist system works when you are demanded to produce as much power as necessary, like maybe like 10 watts max. And if you are, uh, if you need to produce like 1000 watts, forget the purist system because that the purist path cannot handle no feedback thousand watts it's it's not happening at least not on a budget of a sane person if you have the budget of like uh, endless budget maybe you can build it but uh, by the time you commercialize it it will be in the tens of millions of dollar range if you want to build a, a kilowatt plus purist very high fidelity amplifier so, uh, so I think that that's my first take on it, that, that yes, so today the manufacturers, uh, the top ones like JBL and others are getting back and they have uh, started using Alnico's again in their top of the line speakers, but, uh, but these are companies like JBL who have a, a history of making uh, high efficiency speakers for which are suitable for purist amplifiers and Wilson they want to manufacture uh, for complex systems which are totally different philosophy and they focus on textural definition and not dynamic definition and when you focus on textural definition then uh, uh, the ceramic magnets are a perfect match for uh, this type of amplification. So let's now look for the second question in the next video. I see 18 minutes coming up. So thank you for uh, holding out. I really hope we got through the first 10 <laughs> questions by the end of this video. I got to number one. So have an awesome day and uh, we will see the drivers and I share more of my experience. I hope you don't mind that this is turning into a multi-session session, but at least you will have a concise knowledge base in your toolbox. So have a wonderful day. Ciao. Bye-bye.